Um, well, George and I were just kind of spitballing a little bit. I guess uh, we're coming up on noon now. Um, we were just going to have sort of an open discussion on, I guess, practice management tools and some of what we use. I know you were going to deal with uh, FileVine and kind of go over the, the pros and cons of FileVine and your experience with it. I've used FileVine myself uh, at one of my stops, um, so I can kind of pitch in on some of that. And I can say that uh, as far as the merits of FileVine, I know there are some very large and prestigious plaintiff's personal injury firms who are moving to FileVine. Um, so it seems to be one of the go-to tools for at least plaintiff's personal injury firms, both small and large. So that's my segue into letting you talk about FileVine if you want to. Okay, yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Teddy, uh, again, for your, your kind introduction. Um, and then, yeah, so, I mean, I guess just to start off, and I think a lot of us already know this, like, there's already a challenge whenever you are um, doing solo small work because you, you know, you've gone out there, you've made this, that step of faith, and you are getting cases, and then, you know, you want to make sure that you don't get overloaded because now you have people realize, like, oh, like, this attorney is really great. I can actually reach them on the phone. They understand my issues. And so, but you want to make sure that as the attorney, that you can navigate that uh, process by having a system in place so that you're able to work, you know, you can be nimble and work quickly and efficiently and things don't fall through the cracks, especially if you don't have, if you have, you know, a small staff or you don't have any staff. So, um, one of the programs that was recommended to me, especially if you're going to be doing any personal injury type work, was FileVine. So it was recommended by another attorney who had uh, broken away and had been doing his own uh, firm for at least a year. And then I, then I uh, then met with them and their customer service and their representatives, I, I think, are, are really outstanding. Like you get them. They're pretty, they're easy to get in contact with, they speak with you, and they'll help you kind of add on some of the, um, some of the tasks that you may, you know, be wanting to get, like you tell like, hey, this is what our firm is, this is what we do, this is about our caseload, and they can help to kind of customize it, you know, for you. So I really liked that, and it was pretty affordable, um, so but it was great for the intake process, so getting, meeting with the client you can type this stuff in there instead of giving them the sheet that we typically give to clients in order for them to fill out as far as like what happened and all the hospitals that they've been to and all those types of things so uh, it was great for getting that information and then the one of the great things too is that, that you can get a number that is unique to file by and that way you can communicate with the client with, you know, if you don't want to, for whatever reason, give them your personal cell number, you can, you can communicate with them through FileVine. And that is a really great and efficient way. And then it, it will be saved to the file. So then you have like your, a nice work product folder of all the communications that you've had with that client um, that you can have either through your email or through text messaging, and it'll all be saved in there. So I thought that that was a really great program. And then at my firm, we also do criminal defense work. And so they were able to do a specialized category for that for our criminal cases. And I think that that's always really helpful to have that. And then for the business cases where you do have to do the traditional billable hours, they have like a time tracker that you can click on and then it goes and then you can, that way it tracks how much time you have to do and you don't have to, you know, guess or, or figure that part out. The other function that I really liked with FileVine is that they do reports. So let's say you need to say like, you're at the end of the year and you're trying to reflect so you can figure out what you want to do in the future because every probably every quarter but definitely every year you want to evaluate whether you're getting closer to your goals so one might be like okay on my personal injury docket who's referring me the most cases and then how much are they settling for so you can create a report based on uh, the attorneys who are referring you cases um, and in some cases you can also do it as far as like by settlement and the last thing that I really like about FileVine is that they have a system in there where they'll do the settlement breakdown. So you put in whatever you're, what it, let's say you're negotiating with an adjuster, and then you put in the number at the top, and then you just put in the percentage for your attorney's fees. Uh, and then you already input your system as far as like the amount that you do for your, um, for your case expenses and for your, uh, 
and for your medical bills, and then it will pop out that number because most attorneys probably here realize that we are not wonderful at math. And if we do not need to do, you know, the whole percentage and adding and subtracting, and there's a system that will do it for you, then I think that's fantastic. So it can do that. And that's really great, especially like if you're in mediation and you're getting numbers back and the client's like, well, how much do I get? then that's a great system to be able to kind of just plug that number in and it calculate it for you instead of you having to like do a, an Excel spreadsheet. So those are, I think, the big pluses for that. And then as far as on some of the things that are probably not easy would probably be like the documentation storage is a little bit, has been a little bit difficult. And so uh, we, we use a different system for that one, but that you have to use, it's like organized by like certain hashtags and labels that you give. And it just, for me, it's not always the most uh, intuitive. Uh, and then. So what are you using there, Alvin? Is it like a hybrid system where you, you keep just uh, your normal, I guess, a server and a folder system, and then you use Favine for other uh, communication and the reports and those kinds of things? So one of the things that we realized, like, because they went through the function with FileVine as far as like in file sharing, and it was just that most defense firms that we dealt with, they either had, most of them had Dropbox and some had some other, had some other system where you had to like download, you know, some link. And so, um, uh, so we, it is kind of hybrid, but yeah, we do, we just been using Dropbox, um, and that has made it easier as far as just like for documentation storage. Um, but then, and there are other, there's a lot of other great functions with FileVine, but you, I mean, you have to work at it. Like you have to, there's like articles you have to like download and read through. And your person is only, you know, they'll, they'll want you to, I mean, they, they will find ways to kind of get you to, to charge you more if you want them to be more, you know, hands-on on things so there is some of the work on the front end in order to make it but once you once you get through that hurdle i think it's it's a really great tool yeah it's funny you mentioned that we we were using dropbox initially <clears throat> we were using it for everything for storage organization and uh, not so much for templates but uh, i currently use clio one of the main driving factors that they gave us was that you don't you no longer have to spend money on any other third party uh, entities, you can just use us for everything. So they saved us money on Dropbox. So it's like, okay, well, that helps out the accounting. And then they saved us money on um, DocuSign, like e-signing. Clio has a function inside of it where you can just share files and have your client sign it. And it lets you know the uh, the addresses, exactly the time and place they signed it. And that saved us another function or price of anything that we needed for our, our cases. Um, but one thing, you know, that you mentioned, I think as far as space wise, they have unlimited space, unlimited space for us to use. And we say, so what do you mean by unlimited? They say, whatever you want, whatever you have, you can do it. And it's not an upcharge. And they agreed to say it wasn't an upcharge. That was another driving factor for us. And so far it's held up to be true as what they're saying. One of the things like that I don't like about Clio is if they, one of the things, um, the reports, I know you mentioned reports as far as keeping track of the referring attorneys, your expenses for each case, where this client tracked and where they were. They don't really have that. Um, the only reports they may have is just who handled what and which cases are assigned to each. But, you know, as a, as a solo small business uh, law firm, you got to keep track of everything. You got to know, like, what's been going on in this quarter, the next quarter, what can I do to improve But without those those numbers, you know, it definitely doesn't really help you moving forward. Uh, I, was, I was speaking to Teddy before we started uh, about templates. I know when I used to work at a firm, one of the main ways to try to get a template to see how to, to do a petition or whatnot, I would get the assignments, like, okay, so where do I find that? And I said, well, I think so-and-so v. Doe yeah. is it. So I just search the, the file and you'll find it. So I'm over there just searching the file and then- Hey, I'm George, like, yeah. Alvin knows who you're talking about too, the firm you're talking see, about. I, I, I think we all know. Cool. I think uh, I'm there right now. There's, there's, a, there, there's a certain associate there with that uh, I use for a lot of templates. I'll just <laughs> keep it at that. <laughs> so that was the way it's been done, and, you know, but Clio had uh, the templates thing, so it's no longer just do a petition, just go in there, click it, and it's just, yeah. it just has the same template. 
So, so one of the pluses that I'm finding, I think, just because just to add on to your point, is that they, they, there is a way where you can, and it really helps, per, per, particularly with our paralegal, is like, so she wants to do like a welcome letter. There's already a template where she just puts in the name and it spits it out as a word wow. document, and then that is a lifesaver. So the that particularly for that, and then requesting medical records, um, I think has really saved us a lot of time, and so that has been a wonderful function. But how, how does how's Cleo doing as far as on like time tracking for any business cases that you have where you're working, you're doing billable hours? So we don't really have any business cases right now. We're moving to like trying to be 100% PI. And uh, that was one of the drawbacks for me. I was like, okay, right now our caseload is heavy on PI. But uh, as far as Cleo is driven towards billable market, they want to see who have, whoever has billables. Like I can't track my my cases on a, in a, on a uh, contingency basis. So whenever a case settles, there isn't something in there that's okay, this is how much attorney's fees are, this is the medical expenses, this is what the client gathered. It's really just, here's your expenses, and if you want to track your time. So that's the biggest drawback for like my particular um, field, but it, it doesn't do that to answer your question, Alvin. Okay, awesome. Uh, moving away maybe from the uh, practice management side of things, um, I was talking to George and, and Alvin and George, you guys know this, but Abraham Watkins does not really use a whole bunch in the way of practice management software. And so what you find when you work for Abraham Watkins, and this might be true of some small uh, and solo firms, is that you don't have a big practice management system to use and you have to figure out what technology you can leverage to help you do your job. And I think this goes more to... Um, sort of job specific duties. I, I was telling George, one of the, one of the things that I really like uh, that I've been able to find successful is a group called lit software that offers some software called trial pad, uh, transcript pad, uh, and two other uh, products within his brochure. What it allows me to do is to review deposition transcripts. This is through transcript pad and take notes uh, and copy and, and basically highlight different categories of things. You know, if it's a causation issue, if there's a credibility issue, if there's a lack of a foundation, anything that I might want to have with respect to that witness or that deponent. And then it lets me collate all those things in one area. So every deposition, if I'm taking 10 or 15 depositions in a larger case, or even if it's just two or three, everything under that category will be cross-referenced. So it's a beautiful piece of technology that you can use with your iPad or on your MacBook. I think it's only on Apple products now, uh, but that's a really sweet uh, piece of equipment. The other thing is that, and I was telling George this, is with trial pad, it's almost like being Tony Stark, you know, doing doing sort of the cool hand tricks and the, you know, the computer stuff when you're in, uh, in court and in trial, or even if you go and present and want to present uh, to a judge, you can, at a, at a hearing, you can hook things up to the screens and you can actually show uh, either your, your PowerPoint presentation or any exhibits that you want to show to the judge through the trial pad application. Um, it's pretty easy. I know there's a ton of lawyers that do it. There's a ton of YouTube tutorials that can help you through with that process. And so if you are a one-stop shop, but you do want to be technologically savvy and have the ability to present exhibits, cut up depositions, um, and retain deposition cuts, which is one of the biggest things if you need to respond to an MSJ or whatever it might be. You want to make sure you have those cuts and they're accessible. That's a really, really uh, great application that I've found. Again, trial pad, I think it's called lit software, and it's also called uh, transcript pad, as is, I think, the one that's specific to depositions. Um, but that I really, really like and, and just thought I'd throw it out there. No, definitely, Teddy. I mean, I, I'll definitely have to follow up with you on that because the way I've been doing it, it's going to Adobe, making my exhibits ahead of time, going to Google, finding a uh, painter's exhibit A, saving that image, and then making the letter A. To oh, try dude, to find that's way too hard. That's way too yeah, hard. Yeah, it's too much, too much time. And then, uh, you know, of course, saving it and then trying to get the exhibits from the court reporter later. But I remember you said you guys can do screenshots with it, even have the, uh, the, uh, the witness right on it and do a screenshot as well. Yeah, well, here, here's one of the other things that I think is super easy. You don't need any application, you don't need any at all. An iPad or uh, whatever the Microsoft version is, I forget what it's called now, the Surface. I mean, you can bring those in with you guys. You don't need to bring in tons of binders and all kinds of stuff when you go to these depositions. All you need to do, you don't even have to have Wi-Fi, you don't need anything. Make sure that you email and save 
your sort of exhibit list, whatever your tab exhibit list is going to be for a deposition to the iPad or the Surface. You walk in, just like you present any sort of exhibit in a deposition to opposing counsel and ended opponent, you show them the pages, you kind of flip through it, you go, hey, I'm going to present this to your uh, the opponent or whoever's being deposed, have him do it, and then all you do is you run through it and you send that exhibit later on to uh, the court reporter using the, the iPad or the Surface or whatever you want. If you've got the pencil, and I've got, I've got mine with me, I keep it with me all the time, you just grab the pencil and say, hey, can you mark where you were standing? Can you show me? Can you circle that? You'd agree with me that this is north. You screenshot it, whatever else you want to do. And then you just make sure that you send it to the court reporter and videographer or whoever you've got after the deposition's done. It's, it's, I've done this in front of 30 year lawyers who go, oh my God, I didn't know you could do that. You know, you know what's beautiful? If, you, if you've got Wi Fi and, you, and you're trying to do, say it's a car wreck case or something and you're having a hard time, you, you're overloaded, you've been running around, you got four or five different cases on the go and you pull in. And you want to go to Google Maps, just yeah. do, a, do a basic foundation for Google Maps. Would you agree with me that this is a reliable source? All right, you use Google Maps in your everyday life. No issue with Google Maps. This looks like a fair and accurate representation of where you were. You can run through Google Maps and go to go to the street view and go through the street view and say, is this is what it looked like on the date of the accident. You'd agree with me that this is the so-and-so date because it's timestamped in the bottom right. You can do all this stuff just from your iPad. And it's a very easy source and a very easy access uh, and a way to introduce really good uh, and utilizable exhibits and testimony into your case. I mean, it's great. I do it all the time. I was going to say one other thing. Oh, oh, look, one of the, one of the great things, interactive exhibits during the course of a deposition uh, are great. They're great. When you're on Zoom, do not feel, uh, when you're on Zoom in a, in a situation like this, do not feel limited to kind of, I don't know, just what you've got in front of you. You can go on to Google. You can go on to the internet. You can prove things up. You can go through lists. I recently took a, a subcontractor who we sued, went after the general, the general RTP, a subcontractor. I, I took the deposition of the subcontractor's corporate representative. And this guy was furious that he'd been named by the general contractor who was our target defendant in this case. Well, what I did was I had him running along and I built up a case for gross negligence Fine. To seal the deal, I pulled up the whatever the gross negligence uh, statute is under the CPRC, and I walked him through each and every one of the individual factors, which is going to be picture in picture with your Zoom. That's going to be part of his deposition transcript, deposition testimony. You can present that. Um, so I walked him through each individual factor, and then I typed out in Word, sharing my screen, a basic jury charge. I just wow. typed out a charge. That's pretty cool. That's all I did. And I said, you know, um, defendant's conduct, in your opinion or in my opinion, you know, I used his name. I didn't the first person, but defendant's conduct, defendant failed to adequately protect the condition in the middle of the blah, blah, blah. Uh, defendant's failure to do so was post an extreme risk of harm to the traveling public. That's what it was in that case. OK. Uh, answer. True. And I just type it in. Go all the way down. Sir, what do you think uh, an appropriate having reviewed all the factors? that a jury is allowed to consider uh, in awarding punitive damages like they would in this case, what do you feel is a fair and adequate number to punish this defendant for their conduct? Of course, I anchor high and say a billion dollars. The guy says a hundred million dollars. Wow. I type that into my exhibit. I type that into my exhibit. Yeah. I type in a hundred million dollars. That is now exhibit 60 to my exhibit list in my sequential list of exhibits in this trial. That is going to be part of a motion for net worth discovery. That is going to be something that defense counsel now has to write and report back to to his insurance carrier. <laughs> and you can do all that. There's no limitations. There's no encumbrances because you are doing this remotely. You've got Word here. It's it's so simple and it's not fancy. It's a Word document and a table. Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, like even even with those type of um, exhibits and whatnot, I think um, with with Clio, that that's one of the main drivers that I liked as well, because you get to share a link with opposing counsel, say if there are exhibits in discovery, instead of me going through email and having to sort out each and everything, I just send a list and they can sort it out through Clio under the folder with that with that particular case. So doing it with depositions and just organizing everything, yeah, it, it all makes sense. I feel like with technology, that's the beauty of it all, just making life simple and easy. 
I mean, that's that's the biggest thing is how do we make this thing less complicated, a little bit more streamlined? Because at the end of the day, we need the liberty to to really delve into the facts, evaluate the facts and the law and to present the case as effectively as possible. If you spend all your time chasing people down, uh, trying to follow up or figuring out where something is, which a lot of us know is what 50 percent of your practice. Where is this? Where are these medical records? Who, who saved this? Where? You know, and that's the beauty of it. Um, I, I want to talk about maybe a few other um, sort of just tools that, that I have been using that are helpful to me, but I dropped my, my email where I saved what I was going to talk about. So Alvin, you pick it up and vamp for a minute. Okay. The, uh, well, so I guess for, I think for George and USF, how have they been as far as in getting them transitioned so that they could actually use Clio in a way that helps your firm? As far as they being Clio, like um, moving from Dropbox to Clio, was that the question? Yeah, uh, it was. It was good. It was easy. Um, they have. I'm not the most. I'm not the best guy at tech. So they they came to me and they said, "Hey, copy this link. Send this link to us, and we'll be able to go into Dropbox and basically suck out all of your files and organize it for you." Uh, so that was really easy. It seemed like they took the sprint approach a sprint business plan what was what does sprint say we'll buy you out of your contract essentially so that's what they did wherever you're with we find a way to make it easy for you just to transfer over and uh it, it worked for us it's been about two years we've been using them and we're actually thinking about going to file buying given that our industry or the bulk of our work is all personal injury but uh it's, it's been pretty good for the most part the only thing it doesn't have as as file buying did on the the transfer between systems was the the custom made, if you will. I believe you said you guys told them you do this, you do that, you do this, and they just made it custom specifically for your law firm. Ours is you just go off the rack. If that's the suit that's on the rack, you pick it up, you wear it, you make and try to tailor it down the line, but you know, it's not bespoke. <laughs> She's not all type of metaphor. And did your staff right, and now like we it. know George now we know George is fancy. Yeah he's fancy. <laughs> It's, uh, I've been not having too long. That's all. But is your is does your staff was it easy for them to use Clio? I think so. I mean, I, from I haven't had any any complaints about how to do this or how to do that. Um, for the most part, it's it's right there, and it's, the layout is beautiful. I, I've seen the file vine and the needles layout, and it's kind of confusing to me. I'm a simple guy, um, but with Clio, it's all there. It's clean layout, clean interface, and everything just just kind of flows. And if you do have any problems, it's a chat box. But like you said, it's limited. We can only help you so much with these articles and these videos. But if you want them to take the time to sit down and run you through something, there's going to be a fee for it. Hey, guys, I want to ask you a question. Um, how are you doing, like, your faxing and some of that stuff? I mean, do you guys use, like, hardcore landline fax systems, or are you doing remote faxing or, or desktop faxing, rather? Do you fax uh, anything? Yeah, so that is – so. Uh, I think Filevine does offer like a fax thing. We didn't end up using it. I think we just have, we just have like a e-fax service that we use and it's like 10 bucks a month or something. So yeah, which is easy. Same. But I think it's still a huge resource because at the end of the day, faxing is one of the guaranteed ways to get somebody's attention, especially with insurance companies. Right, um, right. And I don't know how many people actually know that they can use e-fax solutions or desktop faxing solutions. Uh, but it's something that we've only done recently where I'm at, uh, and it's very helpful, very helpful for the staff, I know. Right, and it saves um, a lot of money as far as printing, printing the ink. I mean, if you can just receive a fax and get a fax simply by the click of a button and uh, print, say, PDF, I mean, it just makes sense. What about, uh, what about? I know you talked about using Dropbox for sharing documents and things. Have you found, and, I, and I'm really curious in how we can streamline the process and really develop economies of scale and limit time, but how do you send like a video, if you need to send a video of an, of an accident or something or police footage, dash cam, body cam, how are y'all doing that? You just upload it to Dropbox and try and do it that way? Yeah, that's how it is. It, does so it, I, does I, it take like an hour? Uh, right. So I get like one of our cases that we got, there was like a bunch of body cams and it took... It didn't take. It didn't take as long as I thought that it was going to take. I mean, I think it took because that one had body cam. They were each like over an hour. Yeah. Um, so for that one, it probably took. 
there was like five or six so i think it took like an it probably took almost an hour for that one to be uploaded um, so i guess i'm a salesman for for cleo because john my, my law partner john leo he does uh our crim and and i think just a couple of minutes at least even when i upload um any type of surveillance videos of car crashes whatnot it's fairly quick if i need to share there's a share feature where i can share the link to opposing counsel or even to the client themselves and they can they can look at it via the link on a secure basis because i'm getting killed because i'm sitting here trying to upload stuff and i was doing it right before we jumped on where i'm trying to produce a bunch of documents to experts instead of everybody else and and literally it like drags down my computer and takes like two hours to upload a video to dropbox or whatever yeah, yeah. other file sharing software that you're using so if somebody's got a, a, like a file compression solution, because man, in this digital world, I want to send little itty bitty files to everybody all the time. And yeah, uh, if right. somebody does have a file compression solution, I would love to hear it. I've seen uh, cloud bases as well. It's not really a solution to you. It's kind of like just to circumvent the problem, kind of. But uh, we have a case against the city of Dallas and they use a lot of cloud bases. There's a lot of discovery. And that's that's one way. Yeah. Okay, I need to figure out what that is. So Paul, you, you and I need to talk about that quick because I don't even know what that is. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. They have a cloud link and we just go there, we're able to view it on the cloud without okay. downloading, downloading it. I got you. Okay. And I mean, that's the most ideal way, right? Because if no matter how quick the system is, if you have to download it, have to get onto your computer, it's just going to take time. Yeah. So, but if you're I mean, able to push it to the cloud. Yeah, if it's just to the cloud, then you can just, because all you want to do is just view it that you don't have to worry about the whole downloading process. Um, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. What about, uh, how are you guys managing like large document production? I don't know if you got any of that, but how, how, how what, what's your procedure? Do you have any software solutions or anything else dealing with, uh, again, voluminous document production, something like that? I'm, I'm all ears because right now we choose Excel. You know, we get a, a lot of uh, production just go through and just see which one is, what is what was been produced so alvin if you got a solution on teddy molly is yeah i don't i don't know if there's any real real hardline solution for that besides using a third-party vendor to do that for you and there's a number of them that will do it um the, the number one that springs to mind is probably relativity that's the, one of the ones that i'm that i'm yeah. familiar with um and we get an opportunity to experience that from dealing with mdls and mass tour cases here the way that i that i tend to do it um when I'm getting just a voluminous production, particularly where it's like, it's not OCR, there's nothing to it. I will still use a third party that I'll find here in Houston. And there's not, there's a number of like um, law firm or legal specific printing, collating, digesting shops that will do it for relatively cheaply. And so what you can do is you can say, look, here's the production. You put that on a flash drive, you just download it. So say you get 10,000 documents or 5,000 documents and it's just a mess. You go, look, here's 5,000 documents. Uh, can you guys run it through your software, package it in the individual you know, document sections? So at least you get their individual document sections. And then they will return it back to you, OCR'd, uh, documented out with like the base labeling in front. And that's the easiest way that I've found to do it. And it's, it's, not, it's not hugely expensive. Um, so you can sort of bear the cost typically. Now, obviously, it's it's case by case basis. And you have to figure out whether or not the case warrants it. But if you're getting five thousand pages of production, it's probably a bigger case or higher value case anyway. But that's my only suggestion on that. I know it's a huge issue, um, and that's the smartest way that I've found to deal with it outside of like a true third party like ESI discovery management platform, okay. document management platform. And you said relativity, relativity. Relativity, yeah, but the problem is, is relativity is like if if it's a huge case, um, what they'll do is. I mean, they, they've got incredible resources. Well, there they will go and they will dedupe documents. They will tag all the custodians in the document. They will, you know, run through and provide all the attachments for that specific document. But you're talking a big investment and a pretty significant upfront cost for that type of service. And it's it's great and it it makes really large scale events much more manageable where you're dealing with 50, 100, 200,000, a million pages of documents. Like that's not a joke, right? Yeah, so y'all seen it, but that's the only way to really process that volume of information. Um, but it, it might be, it would be interesting to see whether or not there was an a la carte option given that they have the facilities for smaller firms to you know, figure out if there's a deal or if there's a market for them to make a, some sort of agreement to deal with their documents. I don't know, but it's worth talking to just to figure out what sort of 
services are available, how it can help you. And then you can have that conversation with smaller vendors too and say, hey, can you do this? Like, do you dupe these things? Uh, can you identify the custodians of documents? You know, can you tell me if there's something missing? missing in the native format or some other format that I need. I mean, there's something, there's something to be learned by exploring what's available in that market, I think. So they, um, so they, they tell you how, so you have to, do you have to tell them how they organize it or do they give you suggestions on how they organize it or? Um, they will, like, if you talk to Relativity or one of these vendors who does like mass ESI stuff. Yeah. They will, you basically have to go, You what you do is, you can ask them for what you want, and it's a little bit like FileVine or any other sort of system where you can tailor it to your needs. Um, for instance, if you've got if you've got like a product liability suit and you wanted to do it with them, or a massive product liability suit, and you wanted to tailor certain like have certain tags for things, for tags for certain documents, or have hot words that they search for, key search terms, things like that, they could certainly build that in. And then when you go through and review documents, you just tag it, whether or not it hits those search words, you tag hot doc, ultra hot, you know, things like that. Um, so okay. those are beautiful because you can use those tags and those are basically bespoke for you. Um, the, the inverse or the converse, I guess, is that you have to, do, you do have to learn how to use that software. It's like anything else. There's a bit of a, um, an onboarding process that you have to go to, to figure out how to use those things efficiently and figure out what you're doing. And so they'll give you a class any of these, any of these uh, products, they'll give you a class and they'll give you some, I guess, you know, customer service to figure out how to use these things effectively and, and how you know what you're doing. But yeah, you go to them and basically say, look, here's fundamentally what I want. Now they operate in that space. So they'll be able to give you, whoever you are, some advice as to what maybe you're looking for. And then you go from that and tailor it to your needs. That's been my experience. It's great. It's another funny one is cent centrality. Centrality is another one. I like relativity better from my experience, but centrality is another option. Yeah, I've only used Relativity um, in the previous firm. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that one of my mentors, uh, the way that he would look through his deposition transcripts, not really discovery basis, but just to find his place in, in depots, he'll, he'll shout out Spider-Man or Batman. And now it's his way of like just finding out, surfing through to see if it was causation liability. And uh, I was reading one of his transcripts and the court reporter was like, Spider-Man, why, why do you say this? Oh, that's just how I find things these days. So hold on, he would mark... He would mark in his transcript, he would give a verbal cue, and then he would just, what, word search for the verbal cue? Exactly, just Spider-Man. Something totally random that has nothing to do with nothing, but that's just his cue to find it. But now we have technology where we can just go in and outsource it, so, you know, little things. It looks like we're getting some good chat activity on some of this, uh, on some of the uh, discovery Yeah, tools. so it looks like the friend suggested, he said that Disco was the friend that he felt was had better tools can you send a link? Oh, Brigitte, how are you? Lucy, you jumping in? I don't think she realized she's in. I, I just muted it. Uh, that's the uh, powers yeah. of being president. <laughs> I know, right? There are, there, are, there are a few perks. <laughs> but Alan, um, how are you doing everything else with the, um, I guess, with you guys is in Filevine? Has it lived up to what you thought it would be? Or do you plan on transferring over to a different system? Yeah, yeah no, I, I've been very happy with FileVine. I mean, the only the only thing that I wish that we could make better is that, like, even though they have the option for the, you know, the documentation, you know, storage, and we'd like to just have one stop shop with that, it just felt like, and then when we started off, we had just had Dropbox, and it's just been easier to just keep Dropbox. Um, so if we looked at a service like Clio, because it seems like they have that, then that would be one of the advantages of it. But the fact that Fabian also has a customization, um, right. that it's been given and they're really great customer service, it's hard to continue to, you know, to just leave that alone. So, um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I think we, I think we had a meeting with them and that the, they had heard some of the feedback, so they're aware of it. And I think that they'll probably work on it. But um, you know, they. Uh, I think like originally it was supposed to have some compatibility with Dropbox so that you would be able to just transfer it. But that is, it, when, whenever you do that, it's like really cumbersome and it turns it into into the Dropbox or into the uh, FileVine version with all the hashtags. And I just, I just don't like it. It just doesn't. It just, it doesn't. 
it's not user friendly. To so one people. of the things I've heard about uh, FileVine now is that they're integrating with uh, national record retrieval. Is that something that you might do? And as far as like uh, records vendors and getting medical and billing records and other stuff? National record retrieval? I don't think I've ever worked with them. Yeah, I don't know either, but I, 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 I keep my... I keep my ear to the ground, uh, and I know there's a very prominent plaintiff's personal injury firm that is moving to Falvine um, here in the city, and one of the benefits that they're touting is integration with um, a sort of harmonized record retrieval service. That would be awesome. Right? Be, I mean, yeah. that's a game changer. Maybe maybe you want to talk to Falvine about that? Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. Because, I mean, that's that's – Again, early on in your career, you find just logistically trying to get records all the time, trying to get, uh, you know, these information and following up with, with vendors, whoever they might be. It's just such a challenge. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And you don't know if it's there and you don't know if it's not. If FileVine has a system where there's an integrated records request procedure where you can track it, see it, and all that, which is what they're touting, um, that would seem to be a big boon that would lean a lot of people in that direction. Oh, given sure. what, a, what a burden it is to get medical and billing records and everything else. Oh, yeah. When we first started, I would say like the first six months, I didn't realize how spoiled I was until I had to draft the business record affidavit and, uh, you know, because it, it, it didn't make business sense to send it out to, you know, medical record retrieval. Right. Um, vendor. And so you, you're doing it all on your own. That first six months, I was just like, I mean, I had a paralegal or in some staff since I was at the DA's office. So, you know, five years straight, I've had a, you know, had staff. And so you're doing it yourself and you're drafting it on work. I was, those were hard days. <laughs> Takes up a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. So. I'm trying to Google this right now to figure out what FileVine is doing, but I, I had heard that, and and you know if that is a uh, an application or utility, I mean that'd be that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, no, that would be amazing. Um, how, how do you how do you contact clients? Are you using any sort of buffer between you and clients? I know you said FileVine gives you the opportunity to like have a uh, specified message or like text system where you can like get in touch with a client and they get back in touch with you through FileVine. Yeah, so I use so. So FileVine, I think, has been the best as far as being able to communicate with people. Um, and you can you can also ensure that you can keep track of it, too. That So whenever you uh, a new client is inputted in the, in the system, they get an email that's, like, unique for them. So if you're going to send anything from your work email um, that's not in the FileVine system, if you CC the, uh, the email that is specific for that FileVine client, then it will go back, it will go into the FileVine storage and that you, way you continue to have, again, just work product. Uh, and if for every reason there's any sort of the relationship between attorney and client becomes acrimonious, you can say like, this is all the work that's been done in the communication. So you have something that's clean instead of you just having to just search through your emails. It's already there, um, you know, the, the connected to the client. There's another program from a company called Connect. We haven't worked with them but they essentially are um, a system in place in order. It's kind of like, <clears throat> I mean, it's basically, it's like, it's FaceTime to me, the way that they describe it. It's like, it's FaceTime, but it's a little bit more user friendly in the sense like you can text someone and then you can, it has like a calendar function that you can then, so let's say there's like a, someone that reaches out to you and they say, hey, I want to be able to have a meeting with you in 45 minutes. And they want to do like a, you know, like a Zoom type meeting then you can, they can have it where they don't have to download Zoom. They just go to this, you know, you can, the Zoom link and then it will open up um, and they can have a face-to-face -face meeting with, you know, an attorney or any staff member that's on it so that they can decide whether this is someone that they either want to hire or this is a client that you want to, you know, that you want to accept. So Connect was them. They did like a presentation for us maybe like five months ago and, um, it, it, I mean, I thought it was interesting. I don't, I think if you're just starting out in the first like six months, I'm not sure it's worth, I'm not sure I would, I would, the expense I think justifies it. But I mean, I think if you get to a certain point, I think it's probably good to have that because maybe the one benefit from COVID is that people have gotten used to the convenience of Zoom and, you know, video conferencing. So um, most clients, I think we still, I think once, 
you know, vaccination increase and things like that. And we got, we started meeting with clients back in person. Um, but it is really helpful, particularly on a case, if you have like one of our cases, we have, you know, like eight people that we're representing. So you don't want to have them come into the office every single time that you guys want to do just like a case update, you know, once a month. So you have that in place, um, whether it's Zoom or Google Meets or um, a program like Connect, um, then I think it's, a, it's just a great way to keep in, keep in touch with people and they kind of see your face, so. Yeah, Zoom was a game changer. And I think the, the, wide, the widespread uptake of Zoom was a huge game changer in letting, you know, sort of giving yourself an opportunity to get face-to-face -face with the client without having to have them come in was great. The reason that I ask about um, sort of texting and communicating on, on that level, uh, you know, phone or text is because you sort of need that direct line of communication constantly flowing all the time. I mean, you just do. And the trouble I found myself is early on in my career, I was giving out my cell phone to everybody, my cell phone number to everybody. And I can't get away from anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> And so I guess I'm like, you know, if, if connect is, if connect is a useful way or text line, uh, I know is another, uh, service that does something similar where there's a buffer, there's a third party in between you and those clients who we love so much. Uh, I think some of those resources are things that people need to, that need to think about. I know another one that we are now using where I'm at is, um, reach. I don't know exactly what reach is, but reach connects the phone lines that you might have in your office and then just you're able to transfer that in through to my cell phone so if i'm walking around i'm linked up to my office phone so i can give my number to my office phone i can select you know do not disturb or be active and then be linked to my office phone without That's having great. to give out my own text my own my own cell phone number and my own personal That's information great. out as often which is i think a, a very useful application as well and has been so far yeah that, that system's oh. called reach reach yeah and uh yeah if anybody wants any information on that i mean just shoot me an email and i'll i'll double down with our our, our it person to figure out you know exactly what it is but it's, it's called reach i'm pretty sure okay, so uh, yeah. there's a question uh it looks like from evan does reach allow for secretaries to do warm transfers yeah, I, don't, I don't know that i can answer questions from evan and i don't know that we can talk about warm transfers from evan evan get out of here i uh well, I didn't even think about it that way. Shame on you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, warm transfers, like when they pick up the phone and say, are you like free? And then um, versus just say, okay, I'm going to transfer you to Alvin. And then it just rings Alvin's phone. Um, do you know if reach allows for that kind of um, interaction or is it just a forwarding? That's a good question, Evan. I, I really, I'm not technically savvy enough. I didn't even know the, the term warm transfer. Um, but again, I will... I will talk to our IT guy to figure out the functionality and if it's there. Um, I'm going to go on and live and say, yeah, but it's, it's been pretty cool and seem to do everything that we needed to do so far, but I'll, I'll figure that out for you. But yeah, it's, it's been nifty and, and helpful. And I wish I had a more straightforward answer, but I'll talk to, uh, I'll send an email to my guy right now and see if I can get an answer for you. One thing we have is, is ring central. It's, it's an app. Uh, that's where you do all of our faxes from. You can text from there we can make phone calls from there. From the office phone and uh is it so far according to the team they like it For whatever reason i'm stubborn i like to send the blue messages so i give clients my, my cell phone but like teddy said definitely trying to move away from that but ring central is one where you can basically text do everything as a normal phone but it's through the app almost as if you had a a, a google number yeah hey, Evan, give, me, give me the definition of warm transfer again so i can tell this guy exactly what he needs what i need to ask so him. it's so a cold transfer is they call Abraham Watkins and they say, I want Teddy. And then they just say, okay, and they put it into your, your extension. A warm transfer is, okay, let me check. The secretary or the intermediary calls you. And then they say, Teddy, are you free to take a call from client John Doe? Said, yeah, I'm, I'm free or no, I'm not. And say, yeah, of course, if I'm free, then they go ahead and complete the transfer. So that's a warm transfer versus a cold transfer. Okay. We're going to find out. That's the first time I've heard that term, but it sounds... I've, I've spent a long time trying to find out the right phone. Uh, Uma, Uma is another one that's like Ring Central that allows for that. And you can 
text with an app on your phone and um i think their their online application allows texting as well it's funny i saw the name evan lanch and i i wasn't sure who it was but as soon as you started speaking to evan i was like oh evan yeah yeah i can't be forgotten <laughs> Okay. Well, Evan, we only have 15 minutes, but I'm going to get back to you probably outside of this and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Evan, it's a round table, man. Do you have any other questions or anything else, any, any, else, uh, any, any uh, technologies, tools, practice management tools, uh, CRMs, case management systems, anything that you found useful? Um, you've been out for a little while now, and I know you've been practicing and doing a good job. Yeah, I have. It's a patchwork quilt of things is what I've got. Um, use a Google voice number to keep it separate from my telephone number. Um, but at the same time, I have it set up to ring through UMA, which allows it to have a, um, that's about $25 a month. And so I have like a push button menu. Like, you know, if you're a new client, press one or looking for representation, press one. If you want me to, um, so at least I can see when somebody's calling my phone that it isn't coming in, um, from the UMA. Um, I ended up signing up for that because I had tried to hire a secretary in the summer and that didn't work out. But the virtual secretary seems to screen out a lot of spam calls, which I get or don't get anymore because they won't go through the ordeal of pushing the button to get me. Um, and then also it allows it to shut off on certain hours. So if somebody calls me that's not between nine and five, they get a message that says you, you've called outside of business hours. You're not going to reach me. Um, so UMA is helpful for that. It does allow warm transfers. If I, if I do actually get a secretary, I can do it on that. Um, but it's kind of pricey. It's, it's a base price and it's like, I want to say $20 per extra line. So if you could, if you had a lot of people having phone lines, it could get expensive pretty quickly on a monthly basis. Um, yeah. Thanks, Evan. Hey, and, um, uh, uh, Raymond, are you, are you on? With Chorus Consulting, yeah. you made a, you made a statement earlier before in the chat. I just want to give you an opportunity to, uh, I guess to share with what you know the type of work that you do and I guess to elaborate on the comment you made in the chat. Yeah, sure. Um we are a full services company when it comes to data gathering and computer forensics and then analyzing of that data. We also have relationships with a number of different software companies. We are software agnostic. We want to get the job done and want to pick the right tool in order to get the job done. Disco has been mentioned, Relativity has been mentioned, and uh, we have access to both of those tools that we third-party resell when it comes to, to that type of stuff. But uh, uh, really full service, uh, gather data from cell phones, from all your different types of, um, um, you know, old school, you know, standard either desktops or laptops. We gather from servers. We use, we do a lot of geolocation point proving up right now using cell phones. And when those cell phones ping off of towers and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, handle a lot of your chat type data and get it up and loaded where you're actually reviewing it like you would see it on your cell phone, um, that sort of thing. So really we're software agnostic. And we perform all the services, go out and collect the data ourselves. We'll consult with you. If you already have a relationship with a certain piece of software, we'll use that software to throw it in and help you analyze it. Um, I think I can't remember who was talking about it earlier. Um, I think it was Edward. You were talking about um, free services to get you up and running in the certain platform that you're using. We do all that as well for the different softwares that we, we represent. So, we're boots on the ground and software agnostic. Just want to help you get the job done using technology and uh, save you time. That's great, man. So you're a one-stop shop. You're, you're sort of a legal technologist and, and a software, uh, I don't know, soothsayer? <laughs> That's correct. Kind of. Um, we've decided not to go out and create our own software. We've just formulated relationships with best in class, you know, the best software out there and uh, help our clients get stuff done. Shoot, Raymond, why don't you start talking earlier? 
<laughs> us letting y'all letting y'all go. Here you letting go. us chase our tails, huh? Yeah. I'll turn my well, uh, Raymond, can you put your contact yeah. information yes. in the chat in case yes. anybody wants to reach out to you? Yeah, I put my email in the chat room earlier, but yeah, I'll stick it in there again. Yes, Raymond, that sounds excellent. I don't see your email in there, so get us your info. Oh, I see it there now. I see it. Yeah, okay. I think if, if Raymond had spoken earlier, I think this conversation probably would have been five minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hey, one, one thing. One thing this I do want to say. Five, it's, I screwed that up. It's our beacon at courseconsulting.net. Sorry about that. I, yeah, there you go. I figured that thing. Hey, one, one thing I do want to make a point of, uh, and I don't know how many people are using this, but the, the new Research Texas function, uh, a lot of people do it for their e-filing. Um, and there's a whole lot of different e-filing methods, but Research Texas, I think it's re.searchtexas, is your one-stop yeah. shop to get access to 254 counties in the state of Texas for all the filings, for everything you're looking for. Um, if you're not using that to keep track of your, your, your docket, keep track of your cases, and then to maybe you know put eyes on some other work, I think you're missing out on, uh, on, on an important piece of technology as well. It allows what you to see, it? it has all your cases grouped together too. Um, and especially, so I practice in Fort Bend County and I don't know what happened to the district court website. Something happened. And um, so I can see the documents. They will give you a link. Anybody practices out there, you can call the clerk. But if you don't want to mess with that, you can go to research what Teddy's talking about. Um, What's the name of this again? So you log in. You log into e-file, and then at the very top of e-file, it's R-E in a colon, Texas. And it, um, there, yeah, Teddy sent you a better link, but okay. they're on e-file too. So if you're not if you're not familiar with it, I, I think it's honestly worth it if it's possible. But yeah, I think I'll just share my screen. But this is a, this is a huge resource if you're able to see that. Um, this website is, is great. I mean, it really is great. Um, Y'all won't be able to see my password. It's, be but it's better than Pacer. Oh, so much better. So much better than Pacer. But it's like, it's sort of like Pacer. Your own cases are, you don't have to pay for them. Um, you can track your own docket. It's a great way to track your own docket. It's a great way to track and see what else, um, see what else is going on. It's a great way to, to, to really do whatever you might need to. So I, you know, I follow some lawyers, want to see what they're doing, but you can track, you know, your own docket. Um, is it kind free? Of this is 254 counties wide. So it's every, it's every county in the state of Texas. You just type in, you know, you type in your cause number, type in whatever you're looking for. You'll find your case. Um, I couldn't get it. I don't know how to get into Travis County, but I have a case pending in Travis County right now. There's four or five different passwords you need just to get, you know, your look at your, uh, yeah. your case file, your docket number in Travis County. And so this is a much easier way to just get in there and see exactly what's going on. Now it's supposed to be affiliated with your bar number. So you don't have to pay. Uh, to see, you know, uh, the pleadings or what events are upcoming or like that. Um, but this is this is basically your Harris County District Clerk's website, duplicated 254 times. Every case you want from every county you want, it's all here. So is it free or is it only free for your cases? It's only free. It's got to be associated with your bar number, and so your cases will be free to you because this is just my personal account. I would have to pay. If I wanted to, you know, whatever it is, my the Fourth Amendment petition here. There's the quick document preview. Um, you would have to pay to get access to it, but if your bar number is associated with that docket entry, then you wouldn't have to pay, and you'd have complete access to the the file. But that's a huge one that I don't know that there's a huge uptake on. But that's the new comprehensive system that's that's really easy and gives you a little bit more uh, liberty to to go into each every each and every individual county and, and figure you know see what's going on with your cases. And that one came in the fourth quarter. Any any other um, type of technology or place like this that's kind of changing the game? Raymond, uh, pipe up, Raymond. <laughs> no, uh, I, sorry, I was on mute. Um, you, you know, there's all kinds of technology out there, um, and they're coming up with new stuff every day. Just staying in front of it is is one of the hardest parts because. Y'all are trying to practice law, right? And and keeping up with all the technology at the same time can get difficult, which is why we try to take it upon ourselves to test it all out for you. Um, 
and help steer you in the right direction. So there's not a single answer um, on what t- technology to use based on what you're doing. I think if I was going to close and give some closing remarks, I think it's important to target what it is you're trying to use your tech for. I think you've got practice management resources, things like FileVine, uh, Clio, Practice Panther, uh, these different applications that allow you to drive your, you know, your documents, your accounting, and even some of your marketing through complete practice management solutions. And then you have more targeted applications that let you do your job kind of specifically to a, a specific function, you know, it's sort of a, a screwdriver, diamond, a Phillips head screwdriver versus the whole toolkit kind of deal, right? And so where I'm at, I don't really have a practice management tool like FileVine or Clear or anything like that. And I can say for myself, I use for the most part the Office Suite plus Adobe and Outlook. I guess Outlook's part of the Office Suite. The Office Suite plus plus uh, Adobe. I mean, that's how I do 90% of my work. On top of that, you've got applications like uh, Zoom, obviously, and then you can use everyday pieces of technology like your iPad. And then I use this lit software, transcript pad, trial pad. And I think it's called document pad uh, as part of my everyday practice, because it allows me to take more effective depositions. Um, I'm not, I'm not encumbered by huge amounts of paper and I can sort of digest really voluminous amounts of information in an organized and comprehensive way. And then spit back out, spit that back out in a way that's effective when I'm taking depositions, um, arguing a motion or trying a case. And so that that's kind of how I do it. Um, and then, of course, I think just access to the court system through Research Texas is a huge one. Um, but again, that's specific purpose. And I think, you know, just, just think about what it is you're trying to achieve and where you want to gain a bit of an advantage. And then Raymond or somebody like Raymond can help you out with specific tools uh, and technologies for that purpose or provide a more comprehensive overarching approach. But I, that's that's sort of my take on it. And I hope it's been helpful to you guys to kind of flush out some of these conversations and, and provide a resource in Raymond, which, you know, happy to have you come on in the 11th hour, Raymond. What the hell? Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, Raymond is also one of, he's a generous uh, sponsor for the Running Club. So if you guys want to come to Running Club tomorrow, that is available. And I think before, and I thought, Teddy, I mean, this was a really great uh, CLE. And I think those were really great, you know, closing remarks. I would like to guess for us to get a photo real quick. Um, so if anyone Spanish, don't forget Spanish. If anybody Spanish, wants Spanish, yes. Yeah. Sp- well, Evan, Evan you, you're, 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 I don't think anyone can uh, can hype it up better than you. So why don't you, you do your plug real quick? Before uh, high the Spanish classes, we are, we're now doing it only on Zoom and every other week so there's not enough interest for in person. Um, so the first 45 minutes is conversation and the second 45 minutes is I think more grammar or vocab more formal instruction and uh, so you can come for all or whichever part um, interests you uh, station part Miriam and Reagan um, they put a, a lot of effort into the uh, formal instruction so um, come and practice this and the the next project the for the, uh, the solo and small firm committees, we're gonna be offering uh, headshots. So be on the lookout for, if anyone needs an, a new headshot for their website, just be look out for that email. Hey, w- one last thing, just, just to be helpful for people, cause I, I like to be helpful, but look, you've got a whole bunch of resources in the technological age. It th- it's not about using technology all the time. You've got the universe of knowledge available to you in depositions anytime. If, particularly if you're doing Zoom, one of my key resources, if I come into an area of, um, not an area of law, but a, like a, a type of incident, a cause of action that I'm not familiar with, for instance, a fall case, if you've never tried a fall case and all of a sudden you've got a great fall case, you know what your best resource is? Freaking YouTube. Go on YouTube. The Department of Labor has the OSHA website up on YouTube and you can watch a fall instructional. All right. I, and th- look, I, I work with one of the best law firms in the state of Texas, one of the oldest law firms in the state of Texas. There is never too much you can learn and never, never a resource that you don't want to look at and stone you don't want to turn over. YouTube is phenomenal. Uh, trenching and excavation videos. If you don't know that a cubic yard of, of soil is 3,000 pounds, if you don't know the, the OSHA standards, the OSHA standards that are applicable or how they would work, 
Um, go to YouTube, man. YouTube is one of the easiest places to go to to find all kinds of stuff. If you want to watch a video on a driver instructional from a, a truck driving school, YouTube's right there. All of a sudden, you, you, you basically have a crash course in a failure of how to operate a, a commercial motor vehicle under a certain scenario. And you can find that in YouTube and walk your deponent or your corporate representative, whomever it is, and you could even show the damn video if you wanted to in your deposition. So just before I kind of sign off, I really want to give practical advice to people. And I think YouTube is an unbelievable resource, both for, for learning and then also as a source of impeachment. It really is. That was All right. it. That's, uh, that's great. Let's do uh, a picture on three. All right. One, two, three. All right, and make sure everyone's eyes is, are open. Perfect. 